Greetings folks, it's that time of year again. Welcome to H1632Bits Halloween Havoc 2024. <laughs> In the early 1990s, Konami was a well-respected Japanese video game developer. But, for many in the West, the only way to enjoy their titles was either through arcades, home computer conversions, or on the Super Nintendo. Until Konami decided to start producing games for the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis for our American friends. Now, they did produce some original titles, such as Rocket Knight Adventures, but the big news for those of us who own Sega's 16-bit console was the notion that they were releasing a Castlevania game for the Mega Drive. And that game is Castlevania Bloodlines, or Castlevania the New Generation, or Next Generation, or just Vampire Killer if you're in Japan. Now, this game was not simply a conversion of Super Castlevania, aka Castlevania 4, for the Super Nintendo. This was a whole new entry into the Castlevania franchise, designed from the ground up and optimised for Sega's 16-bit system. Now, what did this mean in terms of practicality? Well, in practical terms, it meant the game actually played a little bit faster than the previous Nintendo NES and Super Nintendo versions, which were a bit more measured in their pace. Sega's Mega Drive had a reputation for its high-speed action games in comparison to the Nintendo platforms, so Konami worked with this to help create a game that was definitely Castlevania, because believe you me, it feels like a Castlevania, it plays like a Castlevania, but something uniquely different to its 16-bit predecessor, Super Castlevania. Now, in terms of how this game fits into the Castlevania timeline, it's quite telling that its original title early on in the Japanese press releases was basically Vampire Killer or Castlevania Gaiden, which means side story, and in truth, it is. It is not a direct sequel to Super Castlevania 4, instead taking place approximately a hundred years later in World War One Europe, in fact, with two distinct characters you can choose from, as opposed to just being dropped into the game as one of the Belmont clan. You get to play as Eric Lacard, or his friend John Morris. Now, in Castlevania Bloodlines, you're hunting down Elizabeth Bartley, who, as is often the case in the Castlevania games, is seeking to resurrect Dracula to allow him to take over the Earth. This involves travelling all over Europe to a variety of different locations, hoping to stop her along the way. Now, in the game there are six distinct stages, and each one of them does something a little bit different. Now the first stage is your basic Castlevania opener, but as you get onto later stages there's an incredible rotating tower level, and most notoriously of all, there is a level where the screen is split into multiple segments, each segment scrolling at a different pace. And believe you me, that part of the game is tough really tough, probably one of the toughest levels ever in a Castlevania title. Now, the game itself was developed by Konami's Tokyo Studio, and you can tell that they did have to work around some limitations. Obviously, the displayable colour palette of the Mega Drive is significantly lower than that of the Super Nintendo, which meant a lot of reworking of the graphics to make sure that they retained the Castlevania look without looking washed out or diluted, and I think it's fair to say they do manage that pretty darn well. You've also got the first appearance musically of Michiru Yamane, which I probably butchered there, uh, 
who later became very famous for her work on the Castlevania series, but this was the first time she composed any music for the games, and it is brilliant. A criticism often levelled at the Mega Drive is its weak sound, but as proven in this game, that's a myth. The sound hardware is only as good as the people working it, and this game, the sound is good. Now, as I said, it plays just like any other Castlevania, albeit with a little more snap and pace to it. Now, this was one of the last titles released before the Castlevania games became the Metroidvania style, so it is a linear movement through the six stages, which was pretty normal for the time, but it works. You get this great flow through the six stages, it's just a really good, really enjoyable action platform romp with a horror theme. Now, unfortunately, Konami never did a sequel to this on the Mega Drive for reasons I don't know, because from what I can find, it sold quite well. Although, of course, with the Mega Drive distinctly being the number two system in Japan, that probably played somewhat into Konami's thinking in terms of doing a sequel. But certainly i remember in europe specifically the uk it was quite popular very well received and it did quite well in the united states as well now the localization from the japanese version of the game to the european and american version of the game did have one major difference apart from some editing for blood and gore which was standard in european games at the time and that was for whatever reason and i'm sure konami knew why they were doing this they basically just ramped the difficulty up so the western release from the us and europe is noticeably much more difficult than the original japanese release is this a problem well depends on who you are and which version you play some of the extra difficulty can be mitigated by playing the PAL version of the game, which obviously runs at 50 hertz rather than 60 hertz. So you do automatically get roughly 17% reduction in speed, which can make it somewhat easier than the full speed NTSC edition. But realistically, Konami didn't need to do this. They chose to do it for their own reasons. And, you know, this was a great game. I'm, I'm not brilliant at it. I've never been brilliant at any of the Castlevania games, but I do love Castlevania Bloodlines Stroke the Next Generation. This is one of those times where I'm European and I really don't like the European title. I definitely prefer Bloodlines over the Next Generation. The Next Generation just sounds a bit weak and yeah, it just doesn't work for me. Anyway, that is Castlevania on the Sega Mega Drive. Now, I'd like to give a couple of shout outs here. I've had my first Patreon and YouTube members, so big shout outs to Left Back and Old Scott Retro. Thank you for becoming the first members of my channel. Uh, if you want to join them, you'll find links in the description below. And yeah, you know, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you've really enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. We've gone past a thousand subscribers recently and we're well on the way to increasing that towards my next target, which is 1,500. Hopefully, we'll get that a lot quicker than it took us to get to 1,000, but you never know. Uh, do ring the bell if you want to be notified of new videos being uploaded. Feel free to leave your comments down below. And yeah, this is Rob on his Halloween Havoc 2024 broadcast thinking... I wonder what I'm going to do next, but I'll see you on the next one. Bye.